Peace. Wise King for Wise Words Media. Uh, I had to take a few days before I did this video. If not, I would have been dropping F bomb after F bomb. Would have been on a cursing rampage. So, took a few days to bring down the blood pressure and uh, actually be able to express my thoughts without going into rage. So, here we are, the aftermath of Odell Beckham leaving the New York Giants via trade to the Cleveland Browns for a 17 pick, first round pick, number 17, and uh, like a third round pick and Jabril Peppers safety. This is the worst move in New York Giants franchise history. Dave Gettleman, who sent you? Seriously, Duke, are you a quiet Cowboy fan? Are you a Philadelphia Eagle fan? Let me guess. You're a New York Jets fan. Something's got to give. Who does moves like this? First of all, I was scratching my head last year during a season when you traded Snacks Harrison, who is one of the best at what he does in this league today. And he performed magnificently for the Giants. So you give up him for like a fifth round pick. I scratch my head, but I say, hey, Dave Gettleman, he's our GM now. Don't get the move, especially when the NFC East was very weak. People were, you know, all three, all four teams were struggling. So we had a chance to still make it, but you give him up. Fine. Don't question it too much. Move forward. Then comes the offseason. This man lets go of Landon Collins, a young player who is only in who's only played four NFL seasons and made the Pro Bowl in three out of those four seasons. 25 years old in his prime. He lets him go. Just lets him walk. No franchise tag, no nothing. Duke, if you had no intentions of signing him, you should have traded him. He has tons of value. Now that's when, when he just let him walk without franchising him. I said, yo. And yet, yet again, the guy... Let's go of Olivia Vernon. Now, Vernon wasn't, he wasn't the best. He didn't perform to, to his optimal ability under the Giants. But still, this is a guy who is a formidable pass rusher. And you just, you, you, you let him go for something that, you know, you could have gotten more for. And then the big bomb, the big bomb, when the, when, when the big bomb hit, I'll tell you, I was, I felt like I was in, in an alternate reality. I was like, there's no way possible that they got rid of Odell Beckham Jr. Impossible. It, it still feels fake going on Instagram or whatever and seeing him in the Browns jersey. And, it's disgusting. How do you do something like that? Dave Gettleman must be fired. No other explanation behind this. Man has to be fired. He, because Odell Beckham and Shermer were going back and forth this year, you know, Odell would criticize the offense. Shermer would criticize Odell. You know, and things came to a head when he was like, oh, you know, Saquon Barkley, this is Sherman speaking, Saquon Barkley, he's the type of guy that you everybody would want on their team. He's the type of guy you would want players to follow behind. Calling out Odell in public. Like, these are the type of moves 
that Sherman was doing that was getting under Odell's skin. But Odell was still taking it. Still, he loved the Giants. He loved this team. If you read his public address, you know, he said it's bittersweet. I mean, he shouted out like the the kitchen guy for chefing up something superb on Sundays. Like, this is who he was. He was a New York Giant through and through. And Dave Gettleman let him walk for nothing, for nothing. And if you were going to trade him, you should have traded him last year. Get the Browns' fourth pick, at least, because they weren't going to give up the first. You give them the fourth, you get their fourth pick, a second rounder, you know, and throw in a player. And that's a better package than getting the seven. We didn't even get a top ten pick. Odell's worth nothing less than a top five. Nothing, nothing over the top five pick. And you give him up for that. For it's number 17. Come on, man. This is ridiculous. This guy, Sherman got to go. He's got to go. Because um, he caused the, the bulk of this friction. And so does this fake GM, Gettleman, who... Is also, mind you, this is the same Dave Gettleman that when Josh Norman had his breakout season and he was part of the, he was a primary piece and a primary reason why the Panthers made it to the Super Bowl, he lets him walk a couple months after the Super Bowl. He lets him go to the, to the Redskins. This is the same... Dave Gettleman that let a shutdown corner and Josh Norman just go to the Redskins a couple months after being a primary piece to the Super Bowl team. That's Dave Gettleman. So is this move surprising? When you look at his history, no. He sided with an underachieving coach in Shermer over a, a young, in his prime, 26 year old in Odell Beckham. You see this? See that? I got like, I grew like two white hairs in the past two days. And, it, and it's because of you, Gettleman. I, I can't take this. You have single handedly Dano snapped the New York Giants. What is wrong with you? Mara, please send this guy packing. Get him out of here. So the only dim light at the end of the tunnel for the New York Giants is the fact that the NFL is different than the NBA in the sense that you can rebuild quicker in the NFL. In the NFL, if you have a couple good drafts, you're back. You can be back in just a couple good drafts. So... It just depends on on how the Giants draft. This year's draft is a draft heavy, it's a defense heavy draft. So, you know, just so uh, got to rebuild on the defense, get some pass rushes, get a get a safety, you know. Um also you got to tank. You got to tank for Tua. Tank for Tua. Let Eli go out there. Let him have his victory lap. Let him play his last 16 games. Let's give him a standing ovation for the two championship rings. And then, thank you, Eli. Time to move on. After going maybe 3-13, and 13, next year's draft, we pick up Tua. We pick up Tua, Justin Herbert, from We pick up one of those guys. But we tank for Tua. Main guy we got to get is Tua. So we get, get an edge rusher. This draft, work on the offensive line. We uh, we play bad. We let Eli go out there, and next year we get Tua. You have Tua, a guy with a freakish arm. Um, you get Tua. You have Saquon behind Tua, and you have a veteran now in Golden Tate. You know, Golden Tate's not Beckham. I I get it. Beckham's a five star player. Uh. But, you know, Tate is a four-star. He comes with a championship pedigree. He was 
the primary target for uh, for the Seattle Seahawks when they won their Super Bowl. So he, you know, championship pedigree, cha uh, Super Bowl champion, and you have him as the primary receiver for Tua next year. And you have Barkley. So this year, just work on the offensive line, work on the defense, get yourself a nice edge rusher, get some pass rushers, get some linebackers, and we'll be back in this in a couple years if they can draft correctly. <sighs> I'm going to go have a drink at, two, at 10 in the morning. This is Wise for Wise Words Media. Peace.